Hello, and today we are going to be looking into how to do mouse like aiming movement, okay? Kind of with the, the camera. So like when you move your mouse towards the end of the screen or anything like that, it moves the camera around, centered around a point. Since there's not really many tutorials out there that show this, I figured I'd do it. It's for a top-down shooter, kind of. This sort of thing is extremely useful if you're trying to do like a bullet hell game or something like that. Similar to games like, you know, Enter the Gungeon where you can like move around and you can look around with your mouse like this. We're gonna be looking into how to do that. It's actually rather simple. All right, real quick before the video starts, I wanna take you all to hell. We have a loving community. Everyone is incredibly welcoming and we have a great mod base. Like, yeah, what are you waiting for? Come on, join up, enjoy the warm heat of the fires and remember, welcome to hell kiddos. Hey, so this is actually taking place right after the last episode, which I'll try to leave a link in the description to the previous episode. It's where we figure out how to do basic camera movement and basic like player movement, as you can see right here on the screen. And it, it works just fine, okay? It does work fine, but there is an actual slight problem that I'm going to address that I did not address actually last episode. And if you maximize on play and you were to move like this, you see how it's jittering like that? Okay, that's a simple little fix. All we have to do is un unplay the game. Okay, then you go to the, I believe it's the camera. Yeah, the camera down here. And you go to update method. You switch this to fixed update. And then you switch this um, one that says late update right here, the blend update method, switch that to fixed update as well. The reason being is because our player moves in fixed update time. So therefore the camera should also move in fixed update time. And then we're gonna have super smooth movement. See, perfectly smooth. That is the fix to that. Anyway, now we're going to be moving on to how to do the mouse looking. So first off, you're going to want to create an empty game object, okay? And you can just create, you can just not create, but you can rename it something like uh, mouse, uh, or sorry, you could do it like maybe like camera position or something like that, camera position, something like that. And make sure you reset the transform, you just right click on transform, click reset. That just centers it on the screen, okay? That way you don't have to deal with anything jittery and jittery, like something screwed up, you don't want that. Okay, now we're gonna name this something like, uh, I don't know, camera target, camera target, there we go. We just create and do that, okay? So now we have this script down here, and it should be attached to this. If it's not attached to your camera position game object, attach it quickly, because we're gonna need that. And then you just wanna open this up in Visual Studio or any text editor. So to start things off, we're going to want to make three serialized fields, okay? We're going to want to make a serialized field for the camera, so we can just call this camera. And we're going to also want to make a serialized field for the player position, okay? So we gotta just do transform and just do player, something like that. And then we also need some sort of threshold value, which is going to be of type float, and we just call it the threshold. Now. The reason why we have all these, I'm just going to quickly go through and explain these. So first off, we need a reference to the camera, okay, for obvious reasons that you'll probably see. I mean, if you're new to this thing, it might not be too obvious, but basically we're going to be modifying values on the camera. Um, we're also going to want a reference to the player transform or like the player's position kind of, because we want to make sure that this camera target stays relative to the player area. That way it can like be within the threshold, which is down here. We can set like an arbitrary distance that this game object is going to be from the, the player. Basically what's going on, it's going to move this player or this uh, camera position game object outward kind of like this, what to whatever our threshold distance is away from the player. And then it's going to stay there all the way around wherever we move our mouse position. If we move it back, then it slowly closes it like this. And then it expands it when we move our mouse more farther away. But it always stops at whatever that threshold is. So it can never go too far. So that, that's kind of the whole point of this. And then the camera follows this object instead of the player. And that this object will always stay relative to the player's position. That's basically what we're going to be doing. So now we can just go right ahead and delete this start function here as we do not need it. It is useless for us right now. And inside the update method, we want to go ahead and create a vector three. And we want to call this mouse position and set this equal to the cam dot screen to world point or yeah 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 screen to world point right here and we want to put in our mouse position so if you're not familiar with how this works okay in basic terms basically we're just taking the camera we're asking the camera to be like hey look at where our mouse is on the screen and give us the world position of wherever the mouse is pointing on the screen 
That's basically all this little function is doing, and it's storing that in a vector 3, which is x, y, z. Then underneath this, we also need to make another vector 3. And this needs to be called the target position. And what we need to do is put a parenthesis here, and we gotta do player.position. And then we gotta add our mouse position in here. And then we just simply divide by 2. Make sure you put the, the f there because it's a float value, and in order to get decimals, you need to have it a float value. So basically what we're doing here is it's actually kind of simple. We're just getting the player's position and we're adding the mouse position, like the, the vector three that we got for screen to world point. So it's the player's position and then the mouse's position in the world point area and we're dividing it by two. So basically if you were to draw a line like this, okay, towards the mouse. So if your player's here, mouse is here, it's drawing a line like this and then it's cutting that in half. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't think you actually need to divide by two because considering you have a threshold, which I'm about to get here in just a second. So what we're going to do now is underneath this, we want to do target position dot X is equal to then math F. OK, now math F is a fantastic function. Thank you for whoever created math F. I have no idea. It is very fantastic. It has a bunch of different things that you can do with it. And in this case, we're going to be using the clamp function. And then what this does is it, it constrains a, it constrains a value to a certain threshold and it's very, very, very useful. So we're going to be doing the target position dot X and then we have to do, oh crap, crap, crap. I miss this time. Okay. Yeah. Tar target position dot X and you want to do the opposite of the threshold because, well, yeah, I'll explain that here in two seconds, but let's just finish typing this out here and then um, I'll explain how this all works. But we got to do position or player position dot X. OK, you got to do that. And then you do threshold plus the player position dot X. Now. So the way this works, OK, and, and, and I'm going to keep saying in basic terms because I'm trying to keep this as basic as possible. But the way this works is it's constraining the X coordinate of the target position vector three up here that we just created. So what it's doing is it's saying, OK, we're going to use this as the variable that we're clamping. And then this is like the constraint right here. So it cannot like, it cannot go below whatever this threshold, the opposite of the actual threshold, which if we were to put in like three, okay, it'd be three units. OK, as a float value, so it'd be like, all right, negative three plus whatever the player's position is. And then it's just making sure that it, it's never actually greater than whatever the position is. If here's the player and here's the mouse, okay, and the, let, let's say the constraint is actually right here, like right in the middle point, it won't actually go farther than that. It's, that's all it's really doing. Um, it, it's, it's a really, really fancy function. Let me tell you, it, it comes in handy. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna copy this line right here. We just hit enter, paste it in, and we just wanna change this to Y or target position dot y and we want to change that for all of them because it's the same thing all the way around now the absolute last thing we need to do right now is we just need to do this dot transform not threshold not threshold this dot transform dot position is equal to the target position in a nutshell we have a reference to the camera we have a reference to the player and then we also have some sort of arbitrary threshold distance that the, the uh, game object can be away from the player. And now every frame, it's checking the mouse position in the world point or like in the world space, wherever your mouse is, it's getting that position. And it's also calculating the distance that the uh, target position needs to be or it is from the player. And then it clamps it to make sure that it's within a th that threshold that you set. Now we're going to see if this actually works, considering I did everything hopefully correctly. Um, we just have to go here to the, the, the camera position object, and then you just assign the camera. So we just drag in our camera, and we also drag in the player into the player slot. And then let's set the threshold. Actually, you know what? Let's leave it at zero and see what happens. Let's just see what happens if we leave it at zero. Um, nothing too horrible should happen. Hopefully it just kind of, yeah, yep. It just acts like normal. But if we were to turn up the threshold, do you see how the... You see how the cursor, cursor is moving over there, or the uh, camera position, just like that, it's moving away. That's because it is staying within that threshold that we set. But as you can see, the camera is not following it because we did not do a simple step. What we have to do is go to the camera, 
or not the camera, sorry, the uh, CMV cam one that we created in the first episode, which by the way, go check that out. But we are, we are using Cinder Machine, by the way. But now, what we need to do is see right here where it says follow the player transform. We don't want that anymore. What we want to do is follow the game object that we, we just created, the camera position one. Drag that into the follow now. So now, when if we were to go back to our player, okay, and uh, not, not the player, camera position. Okay, now if we were to start it, and as you can see, it still follows the player. because that, That's because the camera position thing is right on top of the player. But now if we were to increase the threshold, as you can see, the, the camera is moving over. And now, as you can see, our camera is indeed moving around. Just how we'd, how we'd like. Um, it's a little bit, whoa, that's not good. We don't want that. Hold on, hold on. There's something wrong, one second. Okay, so I did find the issue. And as it turns out, you do need to have the two, the divide by two float here. Okay, and it does turn out you do need that. I didn't think you did. I, because I, and when I, when I wrote this code earlier, I kind of figured that I didn't need it just by looking at it. I don't know. Apparently you do need it. So anyway, if you put that divide by two float into there and you were to move around like this, it works perfectly fine. So as you can see, we now have the movement we are looking for. And if we do maximize on play here, as you can see, the movement is perfectly fine. And we can now look around. We can even, if we were disabled to maximize on play, we can even increase the threshold to like, let's say instead of three, let's do like 10. And as you can see, there's the threshold of 10 all the way around. We can like make our thing zoom all over the place and it works just as intended. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, the next one will probably be something along the lines of maybe getting the player to shoot and be able to like actually turn around and shoot. Um, I don't know. Let's see what let's see where that brings us. But anyway, I hope you guys all enjoyed. Leave a like and subscribe to see more, and I will see you in the next Unity tutorial. I'm not